Hi guys, so great to see you today. We're gonna start a new project all about something called mandalas. So we're gonna learn about them first and then I'll show you how to make one. They are beautiful, I think you're gonna love it. And they're perfect for dot day. So I'm gonna make myself a little smaller here. Ooh, I've shrunken down, oh my gosh. And then I'm gonna present my slideshow. Here we go. So let's learn about mandalas. Mandalas are beautiful circular designs with lots of beautiful details. They started many, many years ago in a country called India, and they're made by Buddhist monks. A Buddhist monk is a spiritual teacher from Tibet, and they love to make their mandalas out of sand. Can you believe it? The word mandala means circle in Sanskrit, an ancient Indian language. Mandalas represent the whole universe because circles are one of the most common natural shapes like the moon or the sun or the earth, lots of things in our universe. Now these Buddhist monks, um, I want to explain a little bit about what I mean when I say Buddhist. Buddhism is a religion that started in India hundreds of years ago and is based on the teachings of Buddha, who was a spiritual leader. This is a very large sculpture of Buddha right there. So here's where we are on the map in Minnesota, and way, way across the Atlantic Ocean, across Africa, across the Middle East, boom, there's India. That's where the Buddhist religion started. Now, Buddhist's main goal is to relieve the suffering or the pain of the world. They practice their religion by meditating, like this guy right here is doing, gathering together to pray, and trying to be good to others. They believe nothing is permanent. That means nothing lasts forever. And so we must not be too concerned with material things. Instead, it's best to live a good life and help others. Here's a wonderful video of some Buddhist monks making a sand mandala. <laughs> So you can see they started by gathering the sand from rocks outside, and now they're mixing the sand with different types of pigments or colors to dye the sand. Maybe you've dyed something before like tie-dye. They have a ceremony to get ready to make the mandala. They pray and they get things ready in their temple. Then they start to make the mandala. So I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. They use strings covered in chalk to make a map on the floor so they know exactly where to put each color and each design. It's kind of like how we practice first in our sketchbooks. They make sure everything's perfectly set up before they start. Looks like it must take a long time. They make a little offering to Buddha, so they, it's like a little snack. <laughs> and then they're ready to start. And they pour it. They start pouring the sand. They have to be very careful where they put it. Sometimes they use their hands to pour the sand very carefully and slowly. Holy cow, look at that detail. And other times they use different kinds of tools, like little metal straws that release the sand bit by bit. These guys are so good, they don't even need the metal straws. Wow. So they all work together, and they start in the middle, and they keep working towards the edges. Isn't that incredible? Lots and lots of designs and colors, all to represent the universe. It's one way that they like to meditate and send good wishes to everybody in the world. Then usually the community gathers together, people come to see the mandala. You're never going to guess what they do with it at the end. At the very end, they sweep it all up! can hardly stand just watching them destroy it. But remember, Buddhists believe that nothing's permanent and we can't get too attached to things, material things in our lives. So they sweep up the sand, they say goodbye, and they actually put the sand in a nearby river so it gets washed away and can travel to other parts of the world. Totally beautiful, right? So I'm going to show you guys 
how to make your own mandala today. We're not going to make ours with sand though. That would get a little messy and a little crazy. But we're going to use things from our art kits. We're going to use some art supplies. So let me show you step by step how we're going to make those. First, I'm going to go to my camera down here. So you guys can see my table. So we're going to start, turn this so it's facing me a little bit. We're going to start in our sketchbooks. Our sketchbooks are a great place to practice. On the first page of our ske sketchbook, let's start by practicing some mandalas, really, really simple ones. So I'm going to get my sketchbook. I'm going to get my pencil as well. And let's start by making a big circle. Does not have to be perfect. Those monks sure got it pretty perfect, but ours don't need to be perfect. And inside that circle, let's make a slightly smaller one, a smaller one, and a smaller one. There we go. Now, in each ring or section of our mandala, we're going to add some kind of simple design. So you can start thinking of different shapes or lines you might like to use. Maybe you want to do flower petal shapes. Or maybe you want to start with something else like zigzags or dots. It's really up to you. I'm going to start with some bouncing lines. I always like those. Sometimes to make a design a little fancier, you can do it like double. That's kind of fun. Maybe in the next string, I'm going to make a big zigzag line. It's a little tricky to make zigzags around in a circle shape. Good thing we're practicing in our sketchbooks. So I'm going to pause the video, and I want you to try this again on the next page, but come up with your own designs. Start with your circles and then decide what kind of designs you want to do. Maybe some stripes. Maybe with a swirl in between. I like to get a little fancy. Maybe a wavy line that looks like frosting on a donut. Yum. <laughs> Maybe inside I want to make lots and lots of little dots. Maybe that's like my sprinkles on my donut. <laughs> but there's lots of different ways to make mandalas. So try some out yourself. Once you've done three practices and you've tried a lot of different shapes and designs and lines, we're going to start our final one now. So what you'll need for that, make sure you put these away in the right place. What you'll need for that is a piece of paper. In class we've got big square pieces of paper but if you're at home you might have a smaller piece. Anything works. We're going to start by writing our name on it right in the smack dab middle. Write your name and your class. So 2-1. Let's say I'm in Mrs. Drill's class but if you're in another class you write your own class code. Maybe 2-2 or 2-3 whatever you are. Then we're going to flip our paper over, and I'm going to start with a ice cream lid to trace my circle first. If you have a plate at home, or if you have um, just something that's circle shaped that you can trace, that helps, but you don't really need it. You can draw a circle yourself just fine, and if it's not perfect, that's okay! We don't care. It's still going to look cool. Even if it's like lopsided, trust me, it'll still look cool. So let's start with our ice cream lid right in the middle. Hold it down with one hand and with your other hand and your Sharpie, we're going to trace around that circle. Now, if you don't trace perfectly, like I said, that's okay. We're adding so many different designs that nobody's going to notice that one teeny tiny mistake. I always say, Art doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to try hard. So now inside this circle, just like we did before, we're going to add our rings. 
And if you want to, you can make this extra big by adding your own circle around the outside. Whoa, that's huge. Looks like a tunnel or something. So now in each ring, add whatever kinds of designs you like using your Sharpie. All right, so as you can see, I've added a lot of designs to my mandala. Now we're going to get our crayons out. We've got a nice 24 pack of crayons here. Oop, there we go. Hello, crayons. Hello, Miss Hans. And with these crayons, you can add some details to your beautiful mandala. To do that, I like to kind of catch my crayons. I dump them out, but I catch them. Don't forget to catch them so they don't fall everywhere. And I kind of push some of them back in. That way I can see all my different crayon colors and I like to set them to the side so I can get them easily. So now you don't have to color the whole thing in. That would take forever. But we're just gonna add some funky designs here and there. You can maybe color in some of the smaller shapes that are easy and quick to color in. You could just outline certain shapes so that they show up a little bit better. You can even add to shapes or add new shapes just with the crayon. You don't have to do it right next to the black lines. You can also do extra designs using the crayon. So maybe I'll take my green right here and I'll add a star in between each stripe. So keep going with your beautiful designs until you've got a lot of color and exciting parts to your mandala. So I'm going to pause it and then you'll see what I've created in just a minute. All right, so now as you can see, I've added a lot of different designs to my mandala. Make sure every time you add a design that you add it all the way around. Now that we've got our beautiful designs with Sharpie and crayon, it's time for the really fun part. We're going to paint. Make sure you've got your watercolors, a cup of water, and your paintbrush. One more thing you'll need to make sure you have is your placemat. That's just a piece of paper or maybe even like an old paper grocery bag or something to put underneath your art while you paint so that you don't get your table all messy. Make sure you ask your parents too before you get your paint out if you're at home. So now we've got our paint. And if you're at home, pause the video if you need to go grab all these things, then you can come back and restart. So now we're going to use our paint and our water cups. And there's a couple tips I have for you about painting. Remember, we always rinse our brush. That means we wash it off in the water. Give it a scrape on the edge of the cup to get the extra water out. And then we swirl it. So let's say that together. Rinse, scrape, Swirl in the paint. Try that again. Rinse, scrape, swirl in the paint. Start with whatever color you like and make sure that when you're swirling in your paint, my paint's pretty messy, isn't it? Use just the tip of the brush and twirl it like it's a little ballerina almost with her toes swirling in the paint. We never, ever smash the brush. If you smash the tip of the brush, it won't be nice and pointy like this. It can actually ruin the brush. So make sure you're just swirling the tip. All right, so now I'm gonna start in my center ring and paint that in orange. Kind of covered up the orange swirl I already had in there. Now when you're ready to switch to a new color for the next ring, what do we do? Rinse, scrape, Swirl in the paint. I'm going to choose yellow for this next one. 
The nice thing about crayon is that it's made out of wax. That means it's waterproof and you can watercolor paint right over it and it'll still show through. When you're ready for your next color, rinse, scrape, swirl in the paint. Now I chose pink for this next ring and my green stars are showing right through. But if you notice that your crayon colors aren't showing through, it might be because your paint and your crayon is the same color. Like if I painted green right over the green stars, well the two greens, they just blend right in and you might not be able to see the stars anymore. So make sure you're picking a color of paint that is different from the color of the crayon design that you're painting over. Rinse, scrape, swirl in the paint. Now what I love about watercolors is that they're really good for mixing too. So if you wanted to mix two colors, you can do that. You do it on the paper though, not in the paint tray. So let me show you. I'm gonna start with this kind of bluish green color and go all the way around. If your brush gets dry, make sure you get it wet again. Those brushes need to be wet, otherwise they don't slide around, they scrape on the paper. So if I want to mix another color with this, maybe like yellow, I can rinse, scrape, swirl in the paint. Whoa, that kind of turns it bright green, doesn't it? Rinse, scrape, swirl in the paint. Always rinse that brush before you dip into your new color. Otherwise, you'll get your paints all mixed together and they'll all kind of turn brown. Notice too how when I paint, I paint one direction and then I flip my brush over and I do the other direction. That helps make sure that I'm using all the paint that's on that brush. Don't want to waste any paint, right? Back and forth, just the tip, you know what I like to say? Your brush should dance around on her toes like a ballerina. Just like this, just on the toes. Not scoot around on her butt. <laughs> that wouldn't be a very good dance move, I think. Rinse, scrape, swirl in the paint. Once your mandala is all painted, let it dry and then you can cut it out so it looks like one big beautiful dot with no extra white around the edge. So ladies and gentlemen, if you're at home, be careful with this paint now because it's wet on the inside. It needs to dry out a little bit. Otherwise, if you close the paint and then shake it all around or put it back in your bag, that paint will leak all over the inside. We don't want leaky paints. So you can close it, but make sure you set it down somewhere safe to dry, not back in the bag where it'll get all jumbled and leak through all the edges. All right, that's how you make a beautiful mandala. I hope you enjoyed.